Hello, hello, my squidlings. It is Katie here, and welcome back to yet another Art Snacks unboxing. Today we're on snack. We're on snacking. <laughs> Today we're unboxing the Art Snacks Plus for May 2020, so let's open the box and find out what's inside and create some art as well. Alright, so we can't go any further until we pass the big boss here, so looks like the paper for this box is Bristol paper, so every month in the Art Snacks Plus box we get a paper and this one is a Bristol, Bristol vellum surface. Why can't I talk today? Uh, 15 sheets, 9 by 12, and this is... It doesn't say the poundage. It doesn't say the poundage. Oh, well. Anyway, it's series 400 if you care about that. And it's got this really funky design on the front. Um, so, yeah, this is our paper. Just set that there. Everything else is in the lovely bubble envelope that we've all come to lo know and love. First couple of things. So the first thing here, the card, is for the regular Art Snacks box. And then the second card is for the Art Snacks Plus items in the box. Also, the Bristol paper has a retail value of $12.49. The other plus item in the box is something we've not seen for a while, but we have had before. This is the Marabou Fine Liner Color Graphics Pins in the Skyline set. So we get a black, a green, a red, and a blue. Last time we got one of these was in the October, I want to say it was the 2018 box. I didn't care for them then. Maybe my mind has changed. I don't know, but this has a $6.99 retail. We then have our candy, which is a Warheads and Black Cherry. I always seem to get Black Cherry whenever we have Warheads, but I'm not upset because I like Warheads a lot. All right, next item that the regular Art Snackers got as well is a four-pack, which is super exclusive to Art Snacks and Butterfingers. This is a set made by King Art. Hello, camera, focus, thank you. And we have some really pretty colors. We've got some blues and some purples and some pinky colors. Um, but these are watercolor brush pins, which I find really cool. They work like a pin. They act like a brush. Um, they're very similar to like the Kudetake Zigs, um, the Clean Color Real Brush Pins, which has a name that is way too long. But anyway, this has a retail set value of $6.99 as well. Then everything else is in the tissue paper. So we're going to kind of set the box aside and get to opening. Mine's actually kind of already opened. <laughs> ah. All right, so we have a few supplies here, but first I want to take a look at the sticker. Really cool, loving the print. All right, ooh, I'm excited, where do I start? Okay. So the first thing we've got is a Tombow Erogitin peacock blue color pencil. I will have to sharpen it to swatch it out, but it might be similar to this color right here. This has a retail value of $2.39. Then we have a Copic Multiliner in point three, which is very thin. It's not ridiculously thin, but it is pretty thin. This is also in black, and I do really like Copic Multiliners. I have finally uh, broken the curse of always getting dry ones, so hopefully this one is not the same. And that is also a $3.99 retail. Then we have something I don't care too much for, and I already know this because I've got a few of these. Uh, this is an Aqua Pen Graphics by Marabou. Oof, we don't drop it. So we've got a fine tip on one end. We've got a brush tip on the other end, and I'm not really sure what color this is. Does it say? It does not. It's kind of like a blue-gray, which is pretty cool. And this is a $2.99 retail. That's expensive. Anyway, and the last item is something I'm intrigued by. So this is a Higgins India ink pump marker, but it's not like the ones we've gotten before. So it's got a chisel, but it's a smaller chisel than what we've seen. Um, and you also don't pump it like your normal like pump marker. Um, inside the cap, and I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but you're supposed to like pump it in here. Do you even shake it? Yeah, okay, you shake it, and then you pump it this way, like upright. I lied, don't pump it upright, you pump it down. That was quick. But anyway, it's supposed to save the integrity of your chisel tip. So you don't have to worry about it getting all flat. 
I don't know if you've ever had that problem, but I sure have. Anyway, pretty cool. And this is an $11.30 retail. So this was a bit of a pin box. We got a lot of pins, but we're gonna swatch them out and play with them and see what we think about them. And then we're gonna make a piece. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. All right, so time to use those supplies, put them into action, and of course we're creating a mermaid because surprise, it's mermaid. <laughs> Anyway, so um, I am currently sketching out and I decided instead of going in with a pencil that I would use the Tombow Erogeton pencil and it's relatively nice. It's nicer than I remember them being and maybe it was just because I was using them on different paper. I'm not really sure. It's not something I plan on keeping in my supplies, but it is a nice enough pencil for me to not have been like super bummed out about using it. So there's that. Um, and I do realize the anatomy of this mermaid is kind of weird, especially her arms, but I kind of did that. I want to say I did it on purpose. It was on an accident, but I kind of thought it looked cool because mermaids are not supposed to be um, real. <laughs> They're kind of monstrous and fake, and I just thought it was cool that her arms were long and made her look a little more monstery. Um, it was an accident, but I liked it. So it does throw the piece off a little bit because it is not anatomically correct, but that's okay. Whatever. So... Um, I did use all of the supplies in this piece, which feels like it's been forever since I've done like an art snacks box where I used everything. And like I mentioned earlier, it's a lot of pins. So the one thing that surprised me was the fact that I actually really liked the Higgins <laughs> marker. The last, I think, two that they sent us, they were just, I didn't care for them. They were, I think one was a big old bullet tip and then one was like a huge chisel tip. And this one is a chisel tip, but it's a soft brush chisel. So it was really difficult for me to say that, by the way. Um, so I really liked it. Um, and then this Copic marker, and it's not a marker, this Copic liner was super juicy. It was so nice to get one that actually worked and it's not ridiculously dried out. But anyway, the Higgins marker super surprised me and I really liked it. I think I might actually keep this in my arsenal, which uh, I'm surprising myself about saying because last time I didn't like their stuff. Uh, just kind of outlining the outlines of the piece. I didn't outline a lot of the innards of the piece with the Copic. Um, I just kind of wanted to get some lines on there just to darken up everything. Um, I really liked the colored pencil sketch, so I wanted to keep a lot of that. Um, and then you'll see me using the Marabou liners here and there just to kind of add some pops of color where I didn't have them before. Um, I will also kind of go in with a paintbrush that I got in a different art snacks box um, and just kind of mix in those King Art markers. Um, I, I'm not really good with using them because these aren't bad. I'm just really terrible about using watercolor brush markers. I had like one really good piece and then everything else I've ever drawn with it was not good. So um, I don't know. But anyway, I think this piece is fun. It's not my best. And the more I drew it, the more it reminded me of my original character, Raisha, which was super unexpected. I uh, was not going into this even thinking about her, but like the whole bandaged like chest and then the long braided hair, uh, the color scheme doesn't really lend to it. But, you know. Anyway, it reminded me a lot of her. Um, another thing I did was I used the Marabou Twin Brush Marker. Uh, since it was the lightest gray in the whole world, I used it to just add some very light additions to the skin, and it also mixes really well with that colored pencil. So I just decided to go over the colored pencil a little bit, and it blended really nicely. It chewed up the paper like absolute crazy, but it was really nice um, to have that other you know bit of color. I also watered down the markers just to get a little bit of a wash effect. And all in all, it's not my best piece, but it's really fun and I liked it. And I mean, I suppose that's all that really matters. Um, and I use all the, the materials, which is a surprise. Again, I didn't like a lot of them, but most of them are something I, not most of them, I'd say like three or four things I would definitely add to my arsenal. Um, and I plan on keeping, I think the rest of it, I'm either going to donate or give away or something. Um, I'm not really quite sure yet, but yeah, this was a fun little doodle piece and I'm just having fun with Mermaid. So how are you guys doing? Um, are you having fun with Mermaid? Are you not doing Mermaid at all? And <laughs> just maybe playing some Animal Crossing? What are you guys doing? Um, I hope you all are still saying, staying safe. I can't talk. Um, I just, I'm really worried about everybody because it's just such a scary time. So I hope you all are staying safe and I love you all so much. I'm just adding some final white highlights with my white gel pen that doesn't seem to like to go over any of this watercolor stuff. Um, either that or it's about to go out. I have a lot of trouble with it. Um, 
But yeah, another thing real quick I didn't really like about this piece is how thick her hair is. But anyway, here's a little bit of peel porn for you. Um, anyway, I really hope you enjoyed the video. Here's a look at the final piece. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. Look forward to next month's unboxing. And I have something really special for you guys. So I hope you enjoy that. And until next time, my adorable squid links. Toodaloo!